midges are all over me. Like, I'm getting eaten alive. I'm starting to get delirious and a bit crazy here. Like, I'm hitting myself and stuff. So I'm gonna try and get my kilt off and get the jeans on. Lots of future whiskey fallen here today in the Cairngorms. I am in a town called Kingusi. Kingusi in the Cairngorms, near Aviemore. We did something a bit adventure everything, hashtag adventure everything, last night. We um, decided that we didn't have many days left to come and see a specific location for Outlander before we had to travel away to New York. Uh, and it got to about three o'clock last night and we just decided, you know what, hell with it, let's just do it. We only live once. YOLO. So we booked a hotel, the first one we could find on the route up to Inverness. We are about an hour away drive from Inverness at the moment and we stayed here last night. We got here very late. Unfortunately the weather is shite. Typical Scottish. But nonetheless, we're in the Highlands and we're going to give it our best shot. Anyway, we're going to get checked out and we're going to get on the road to show you some of these places. Hopefully it's not raining up there. Look at this view. Yeah, that is some pretty heavy rain out there. Over there is supposed to be the Cairngorm mountain range, but you cannot see it because of the rain. Oh, it's raining. So the owner of that hotel, really, really nice guy. He is English and he, he belongs to some kind of Jacobite reenactment group. He actually gave us some useful information about the places we're gonna go and visit today. Right, we've just turned off the A9 and we're heading towards Culloden now. We're not far away at all, just about five minutes. One of the things I've noticed is the heather is in really bright bloom at the moment. It's really bright purple. It's really, it's absolutely beautiful. Even on a dull day today, the heather brightens things up a bit. I've not been up this area for a very long time. I've never ever been to the Battle of Culloden site, which is absolutely shameful. So that's one of the things that Outlander has done for me. Anyway, we're almost there. It's absolutely heaving with people here. I did not expect that. That is the Outlander effect, I'm guessing. There's actually an experience here where you can go and watch a kind of a cinematic type of thing that explains all the history and stuff, so hopefully we're gonna get to do that. Pretty rainy and cold here. Um, we just did a bit of a tour. It's quite interesting to get some of the facts and history about the battle. But um, I'm going to walk onto it right now and have a closer look at some of the battlefield. So basically, this line here, this road, and these red flags, which are all along this path behind me, stretch all along there. That is the government force line. It's something we've been told many times on this visit already by the tour guides to remember is it's not necessarily a battle of England against Scotland although that's what it is often misperceived as it was more of a civil war between people who supported the Stuarts the Jacobite cause, the Stuarts on the throne, back on the throne or the current government forces what kind of reminded me when they were explaining it is kind of like a referendum of the time although today we do it with votes and quite peaceful relatively speaking and then they did it with swords it was basically a fight over who was to be king of the country. As well as everything else, the Jacobite soldier army contained Frenchmen and it contained English people, it contained Welsh people, it contained Irish people, it wasn't just Scottish. And also on the government supporting side, the government force side, they also contained Scottish. In fact, about a third of them were Scottish, which not a lot of people actually know. Um, so that's quite an interesting fact. And the Jacobite army, which would be mostly Scottish clans. And another point which I find fascinating is the fact that there were actually family members on this battlefield who were on different sides. For example, two brothers were on different sides of the army. One died from the Jacobites and the other one didn't. And there was a father on one side and both of his sons were on the other. So like, 
that is a kind of bizarre split situation we see. A bit like politics of today where families are divided on political issues. Today it's on issues over like Brexit and stuff. And back then it was whether you wanted the Catholic king or the Protestant king on the throne. And this here behind me is the main war memorial for the Battle of Culloden. I guess thanks to the popularity of Outlander, this is one of the only grave markings in the whole place where the grass has actually been worn out. Now the fact of the matter is, although a lot of these stones with the graves with the big clumps of grass behind us are marked as like Clan Fraser here for example, they don't actually know exactly who's buried there. But each of these graves contains like 150 people, which is quite a lot. And these stones were actually put in place something like 130 years later after the battle. So they don't actually know who was in here. All they know is there was a lot of men buried in each of the mass graves here on this site. But I think it's kind of nice that they did mark stones because like we know the clans that were generally buried in this area. An important place for every Scottish person to come and learn about the Scottish clans and what happened to them. And this was their final hurrah. Whole system and structure in Scotland literally ended at this battle. And none of the people who own this land have ever went into the ground here to kind of find out exactly how many bodies and stuff but they have done kind of ultrasound scans from above so they can actually see that they're graves but everything has been left exactly the same when these people were actually buried a few days after the battle. It was actually three days that nobody was allowed in here to to make burials. The, the government forces wouldn't allow it so three days later the people of Inverness came in and actually buried these people. Basically each of these lumps of earth here behind me, the mounds, are mass graves of hundreds and hundreds of clansmen who died here. She's the big fan, she's joking. <laughs> Are you both Outlander fans? I'm um, not as big as... Have you guys come here to like, just to see Outlander stuff or...? We're on an yes, Outlander we're tour. we're on a three day Outlander tour. <laughs> Where have you been in Scotland so far? Loch... Lallybrook. Lallybrook? We were there the other day as well. Um, Dune Castle. Dune Castle. Which uh, is... Lear <laughs> Castle. <laughs> and... Are you taping this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <shut up. laughs> Where are you guys from? Um, we're both originally from New York. I live in Israel now. Oh, amazing. Cool. We're actually going to New York next week for the first time. That's she cool. asked me a year ago, she goes, do you want to go to Scotland with me? <laughs> I want to go to see uh, this, you know, because the show Outland, which I'd never heard of. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'll go and I'll watch the show and I'll let you know. And I watched it and I liked it. You're so. enjoying it? Yeah, very much. Cool. <laughs> what do you think about Scotland and the, the people? It's beautiful. That, yeah? The weather could be better. The weather could be better. We all <laughs> complain about that every day here. So how long are you going to stay here more? Or you just... We're here for a week and all. That's and great. Three days is an Outlander tour and mm -hmm. the rest we're going to be in... Edinburgh and Stirling Castle. Places Amazing. Like that. I'm from Edinburgh, that's my city. Yeah. Hope you enjoy it. Well, really nice to meet you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay in Scotland. I hope you enjoyed your stay in Scotland so far. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, yeah, welcome. Thank you. All right, so we've walked to the opposite end of the battlefield now. Blue flags behind me. Up there. This is the Jacobite Prince Charlie line. One thing here on a rainy day in Scotland as well, on places like this. It's alive with midges and I'm getting bitten all over the head, ears, everything. The midges are out and they're after me. Anyway, that was a nice wee tour of the battlefield here. I highly recommend anyone from Scotland who's never done it before to actually do it because it's very important historically to get the context of what happened here. Now, other than the big mounds of earth where the bodies were buried after the battle, there's very little from that time that you can actually tell that anything really happened. But this stone house here, this was actually here during the battle. And the British army, they actually used this as a makeshift first aid hospital for the British soldiers. They refused any quarter, they refused any treatment for the Jacobite army, of course, but they, they did treat a number of the injured British army soldiers here. And apparently there was a bit something like 250 of them who were seriously injured. And only 50 of the British soldiers died, as opposed to 1,500 of the Jacobites, just because to show the scale of which they were outnumbered and outgunned, the British forces had a far superior 
weaponry with them on the day and were all also rested and well fed which the Jacobites were not. Anyway, I thought it was interesting to bring you here but it's not the main focus of today's trip. I've got another place to be. So here we are, we are at Craig Nadun, kind of. Now this was a site that's probably the most requested on all of my channel. People on my Patreon page have asked me to come here. Craig Nadun is one of the most requested places of all the Outlander locations. I have never been here before, this is my first time so I'm very very excited. But I must give you one piece of bad news when I start, just as I'm starting here. Craig Nadun doesn't actually exist, it's fictional, 100% fictional. And in fact there are videos on YouTube where they show you the Craig Nadun stones that they use in the set, actually in a film studio. They were built specifically for the studio, they're not real at all. So that will disappoint a few people, I know that, and uh, not everybody knew that, but that's a fact. Craig Nadun doesn't exist. However, there are two or three different standing stone circles across Scotland that a number of different people say inspired Dana Gabaldon to write the story of the standing stones, the circle stones. I don't think anybody really understands or really knows exactly where Diana took her inspiration from for Craig Nadun, the stones. Whether she took it from this place or whether she took it from several different standing stones, we don't know, only Diana can tell us. But a lot of people say it's here where I am at the moment and the reason is because it's so close to the Culloden battlefield, which she obviously did a lot of research on for Outlander. So we're gonna take it as this. There's also standing stones on the Isle of Lewis which look like Craig Nadun, but this is the most common place that people associate with Outlander and it's called Clava Cairns or the Balnuran of Clava. So here we are. Unfortunately it's raining but there's quite a lot of tree coverage here so we're keeping a bit dry. So a lot of people say this is a really magical place to come and visit, especially at night, very eerie, very beautiful. And I can already see it is absolutely magical. It just said on the sign back there this was built, they think, between three and four thousand years ago so we're talking a very very long time, way way before any of the story about Outlander and the clans two or three hundred years ago. This is, this is, we're talking serious history here. Like types of people that we can't even imagine that lived here. Cannot believe I've never been here before. That moment in the series when Claire hears a noise and then gets closer to the stone. And then, and then. a path into this one. It's like a wee house. I wonder if it had a roof on it at one point. Absolutely bizarre. Not sure what this would have been for or about or who knows. As well as being very very wet and rainy today, it's also quite warm so it's very very muggy. This is such an impressive cool place. I really wish we could come here in the evening at night, I think this would be really kind of magical. And these stones here, they actually have piles of rubble that lead up into the main circles. These are all things about Scotland that I don't know and need to learn. It's really cool to come here anyway, see the place. So, we need to find out from Diana Gabaldon, is this a place that inspired her to, to write about Craig Nadun? Look at this stone here. It's amazing, big slab. And why are these here? Who put them there? What was the purpose? Was it something to do with sun and the seasons? We're literally about 15 minute drive away from Inverness as well, which is pretty cool. If you guys are not from Scotland, you, you've probably not heard of this before, but we have this thing called midges, right? Midges are tiny little flies like mosquitoes that bite you, but they're really, really tiny. And they swarm, so you don't just get bit by one or two, you get by, bit by hundreds at a time. Places like this where there's no wind. Oh my goodness, there's just so many. I'm itching like hell. They're going right up my kilt. It's found a downside to the kilt. They can't get in the trousers, but they can get inside a kilt, right into places where I don't want them to be biting. They really love these kind of damp days, especially places where there's trees like here. Oh, there's just swarms of them. Watch my leg. Look at these wee bastards. Right. 
I'm not kidding you. The midges are unbearable. I can't take it. They are all over me. They are flying all around. Tekka has given up. She's in the car. She cannot take them anymore. But I'm being bitten like Fury. I am doing this for you guys. I am being punished here by these midges. They're flying. I can't, can't see them on camera, I don't think. They're too small, but they're literally swarming around me. Woo! They're actually making me a bit delirious. But the filming must go on. The show must go on. A coach load of people has just arrived. Hello. 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 And with that, I think I'm gonna make my retreat. These midges have got teeth like Rottweilers. So I'm gonna go back in the car and I'm gonna head back to Inverness. This is too much. The midges are all over me. Like, I'm getting eaten alive. I'm starting to get delirious and a bit crazy here. Like, I'm hitting myself and stuff. So I'm gonna try and get my kilt off and get the jeans on. Oh, there you go, full demonstration of how to take a kilt off with nobody seeing you.